This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Aurora, Colorado. We're here at the Performance Play Music School, brand new for 2015. They have been providing music school offering private, group, and performance-based classes for folks here in Aurora and the surrounding areas. <music> who is the owner, general manager, music director, instructor. Quite a few topics you got going there, Dan. Let's start off a little bit about yourself. I mean, quite honestly, this was a company that began by you and your brother. Correct. It's family owned and operated. You guys, way back in the 90s, you guys have done some performing yourselves. Um, you've done a lot of instructing in the past, over, over a decade. Let me ask you, was music something that you were brought up with and how did you get involved doing this type of industry? Well, yeah, my grandfather started some music stores slash schools um, back in 1936. And, you know, he was very successful with those. He had about five by the time it was done. And then my brother decided to uh, buy those when, when my grandfather was ready to retire. And so, yeah, we've always been exposed to music. We all played music uh, ever since we were in like, you know, third grade. My brother and I would jam in the basement playing Van Halen and stuff. So That's very cool. Like you say, going all the way back to 1930s there, music is the universal language. Obviously, it is enjoyed by people with their ears. We all love listening to music. But even more enhanced is when you can actually enjoy that performance with your eyes as well. Why was the performance aspect something that was important that you guys would incorporate into your training? I think that really uh, provides the glue to hold the musicians together to stay with their instruments. I mean, there's a, definitely a social element. You know, these kids love coming to their band practice every week for two hours. Um, they become really good friends. And, you know, it's, it just takes it, you know, beyond the next level. I mean, you re once you feel what it's like to perform on stage, it becomes something that's definitely more in your blood. I believe that. I mean, I, I grew up uh, musically inclined. I love playing multiple instruments. And quite honestly, I was quick to learn that even though you're, you're great at an instrument, doesn't mean you're great at performing that instrument. Oh, yeah. Is that something that is really expressed here and learned? Absolutely. Uh, we try to, you know, towards the last couple practices before the kids have a show, make them stand up, make them start looking around. Hopefully they memorize their parts so that when people are watching them perform, it's actually enjoyable to, to watch. And they're not just kind of, you know, memorizing their parts and still staring at a sheet of paper. So it's, it's a whole other step. Yeah. Speaking of a whole other step, I just got done witnessing a performance you guys had here downtown Parker, Colorado. Um, I've got to tell you that the expressions that I've seen on those kids' face, the passion in their eyes, um, quite honestly, th this has to be something that is about connecting with the audience. Obviously, that was probably a pretty exciting day for you as well. It was, it was wonderful. It went off without a hitch, and... Uh, you know, I, I couldn't have asked it to go any better. The, uh, the place was packed. You know, everyone was up against the stage, and that just feels so good when you're on the stage playing to a crowd, and they're just jammed up against you, and it's just uh, you can feel the energy. I mean, a guy would have to be blind not to see these kids are having fun. Uh, not only is it fun, but, I mean, I've seen it, it's, a, it's competitive. I see um, them able to express themselves. I also see confidence levels that um, these kids are able to, to push out there. This is something you really don't find in any kind of other sport program, if you ask me. Yeah, I mean, it's... Um and even if you were in a sports program, you know, I mean, it's a great thing to add to your repertoire because... Um, it's, it's, it's just an extra level of depth that you can connect with people and, and perform for people and just become, you know, a better person. Let me ask you, let's start off with some of the classes here. If somebody wants to get the best, fastest results, why is private one-on-one -on -one class still the way to go? Well, you know, there's all kinds of different personalities. There's all kinds of different ways that people learn, whether it's visual or oral or a combination of the two. And, you know... Getting one-on-one, -on -one, your instructor will figure that out within about three lessons and then really start catering that, your, you know, that instruction towards you. 
I mean, I'm pretty amazed you've got 2,000 square foot of uh, a lot going on here. I mean, you've got a pretty packed school here. What are the instruments you learn how to play? I mean, I see guitar, I see piano. What else we have? We've, we've pretty much got most of them covered at this point. I mean, you know, obviously guitar, bass, drums, keyboards, and vocals. And then, you know, we've got the trumpet, the tuba, the saxophone, the clarinet, the flute, you name it, vi all the string instruments. So it's fun. I love walking through the hallways and just hearing the, the symphony of sounds, you know. I mean, I know for myself, I've got a, a young kid who's only like two years old, and yet they're already starting to enjoy music. Um, you're never too young or never too old to enjoy music. Tell me about the babblers class. Is that something you guys are incorporating in? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, we have a wonderful instructor who, who um, has been doing that for probably 20 years, and she works with the kids, you know, and just really knows what she's doing to actually take them step by step through the different, you know, childhood development uh, levels that they need to go through to um, comprehend that at the, at the proper uh, rate. So be it babblers or dabblers, depends on what age they are, they really can start um, really early on appreciating um, listening to music, enhancing their skills of listening, and also, I imagine, taking direction. Yeah, that is one element. And it's just, you know, I remember with my daughter, I think she was only, you know, 13 months old. And it was just fun to see her get in a class and, and, and be social with other kids. I've seen performance of grade school and middle school uh, music performances before, but I've got to tell you what I've seen there in Parker. Um, you could see that some specific training in performance actually was taking place. I mean, these guys took command of a stage, and uh, you kind of forgot that how young they really were. Yeah, I mean, um, that's kind of our whole goal is to give them enough time to, I mean, we let them pick the songs themselves um, in most cases, and then we... Um, you know, just let them really own those parts and so that we can kind of, you know, by the, by the performance, we're just kind of hands off watching them and, and, and don't even have to do any cues, really. So Once they learn the basics from performance here, um, obviously performance is not something you're going to learn overnight. You've got different levels. You're talking about uh, basically players, performers, professionals, pros, um, what you guys, stars. Those are all different levels that people basically are able to, to work into. And is this for youth as well as adults? Oh, absolutely. In about uh, five minutes, you're going to see oh, them rolling in here. We got in a, a really good adult band that um, meets here for two hours every Thursday from 7 to 9. We'll probably start another one pretty soon. And uh, it's a blast. You know, I've, I've, I've subbed for that class before. And, you know, it's just great because, like, it's like I have my own band, basically. I, if, if, uh, if, if one of the guys doesn't show up, I can sit in and sing some songs that I like to sing or play some drums. But, um, yeah, they really, the, the adults love it because, you know, they don't always have a lot of time to get a band together themselves. But obviously there's a ton of adults out there that play guitar and drums and keys and things. And so we do all the hard work for them. We chart all the songs out. We send them around in an email group so they, that everyone can practice and know what they're doing by the time they get here. I mean, it is class, it is school, but quite honestly, when I grew up, um, you couldn't wait for the weekend to stop doing what you did during the weekdays. But, I mean, for these people that don't have enough, you got weekend, um, some weekend players here. Tell me about that, the weekend rockers. Well, basically, we do something on the first Saturday of every month, and that is just invite the whole community, whether or not they're students here or not, just to come and play as a group if they've never done it before. So we have a, this big performance room, which I'm sure you'll see. It's got the drum set and the bass amp and everything. And so, you know, maybe people have taken lessons for, um, you know, six months or something like that, and they want to try playing along with the drummer and playing a song. Then we can we have, we have a bunch of songs that are kind of easily charted and easy to learn and, and we usually get them playing at least five or six songs so excellent viewers take a look at the bottom of the screen right there what you're going to see is their website on the website what you're going to find basically is um take a look at all the classes they provide out there for you we're talking about private classes all the instruments like he says they're they got you covered here and um you can sign up right there you can even take a look a peek inside of a class right there obviously we've been showing a lot of the performance pieces we've been showing you some of the private um sessions um they've got a complete facility here basically that is um, designed to really show you the appreciation of music. One of the things that really separates you guys from a lot of the schools that I see out there is the fact that this is more than a school. We're actually talking about a store. Yeah. We're talking a place where you can actually rent an instrument or even purchase one. Tell me about that. That's right. We do rent um, the full array of band and orchestra instruments here. So um, we a lot of times we have really good trial 
periods if you catch us like in August when the school is starting back again. And so, yeah, you can rent your trumpet here, your violin, you name it. And, um, you know, it, it, that we also have, you know, I mean, not, a, not, a, not as much as you'd find at the larger stores, but we have enough just to keep your strings replaced. We got your sticks. We got, you know, beginner, a lot of beginner instruments because we do get a lot of beginners at our school. And that way we can hook them up with a really affordable guitar right off the bat or, or you know, other things that we have back there. So. so you're talking about all the essentials right here if you need them. you got your strings and everything you need um, to basically learn the instruments as well. Um, you guys have started doing this in 2015. Um, are you looking forward to actually putting out some camps out there and, uh, and things like that? Yeah, we have. We actually did summer camps uh, most of the weeks last summer, and we'll be doing them again this, this summer, of course. They usually start the first week in June and go all the way through August and um, you know we'll probably even start doing some camps for those kids who are off track so um, sure. you know when if the parents don't know what they're gonna do with their kids for those two or three weeks out in the Cherry Creek School District they can send them here and have them join a band for a week or two weeks or whatever they want to do what a great option something positive out there for the youth to be doing and obviously one of the things that I've seen that I never seen before is uh, you've got a uh, you've got something you do for birthdays out there tell me about that that's cool yeah birthday parties um, you know we, we do that for kids who are slightly interested in in just kind of performing or even if they just are want to do like a glorified uh, karaoke type of thing we have really cool lights in our big performance room and um, you know we'll, we'll let them sing along to the microphones which all kids love to do or they can you know sometimes we've had success where if kids are old enough we can actually teach them how to play like three rock songs by the time that you know two or three hour birthday party's done they can perform for their whole family and friends that is very cool. We definitely want to come down here and introduce this uh, new company that you provided here for the Aurora area. Um, I've got to tell you, um, I was in a unique position being over there and enjoying the performance due to the fact that I was out in the audience and I was able to see the, the kids doing their thing. But I was also on the stage and I was able to look back at the audience, look back at two brothers who were sitting there. Man, this has to be pretty rewarding for you guys when you're seeing it come to play like that. Absolutely. It was... Uh especially for my brother who actually lives in the uh, back on the east coast and for him to come out here and and just see what has happened you know in the last uh, year it was very exciting for him very exciting viewers last time take a look at the bottom of the screen right there what you're going to see is their website on the website basically you're going to find out some of the classes they provide for you out there um, this is a company that is brand new to the aurora area but i can tell you these guys are not brand new to the music scene this is uh, basically a family that can trace the roots all the way back to the 30s if you will and uh, basically they've been involved in business been involved in music not only that but since back in the 90s they have basically performed and uh, they know the ins and outs of music and they're just happy to share that passion with you once again that is the performance play music school located here in aurora colorado this is gary atensi with cntv and if you don't know now you know This is Gary Atensi with CNTV, and today we're in Denver, Colorado. I'm here at Mel's Cheese. Brand new since 2015, they have been delivering high-quality artesian products from producers all over the world right here locally to our neighborhood here in Denver. I'm here with Paula, who is the president, owner, founder. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Let's start off a little bit about yourself first. Um, you were in the IT professional world, corporate world. You were being driven by a passion of wanting to learn more about food, cheese, wines. Um, obviously, this wasn't something that started in 2014, but made its way to fruition. This probably began when you were much younger, influenced by that of a grandfather. Tell me a little bit about your story and how it all started. Well, first of all, a lot of folks ask where the name Mel's comes from, and that was my grandfather's name, and it's also my middle name. So um, he was probably the most influential adult in my young life growing up, and uh, loved to grow his own vegetables, and uh, he made homemade grape jelly, and was basically a short order cook uh, whenever we came to visit. 
That is, that is fantastic. I mean, when we're talking about cheese and wine and meats, these are products that really basically, they predate our history of knowing about them. And we're talking about some old foods here. Is it kind of exciting to introduce these still in modern day Denver? And um, is the fascination and love of that type of food still alive and well here? It, yes, it is. And really, that's what, what my passion is all about, is the history and the culture and all of that behind the products that we offer here. And that's what really got me into uh, wine and cheese. Both. Um, they say all great things take time. Definitely what you're offering here, it's kind of like that. We're talking about aged wine, aged cheeses, even meats. Um, let's start off with cheese. For folks out there that don't even understand the process of how cheese is made, um, share with us a little bit how, how it comes to be here. Well, um, it's a long process, and it's more of an art, really, than, than a process, I would say. But, uh, you know, it comes from, you know, raising the animals, raising them in a humane way. Uh, most of the, the animals are treated better than the, the owners of the dairy farm's children. <laughs> they live in very, very nice places and uh, are fed well, and, you know, happy animals make great products. So it starts really with the animals and the food that they eat and what they intake. And then it all starts the process of you know milking the animals knowing what time of their season to do that and then it goes into you know uh, making the cheese aging the cheese and there's just so much that goes into that it's you almost have to be a chemist I think to really do, do well <laughs> like you said it's not a science definitely we're talking about really an art of knowing when to do everything um, your desire was really to create a place where people would be able to try things maybe they've never tried before and you are doing it. We're talking about, um, in the case here, a hundred different types of cheeses, hard cheeses, soft cheeses, fresh cheeses, blue cheeses, just to name a few. Um, rattle off, if you will, some of the cheeses that we're going to be experiencing here in your shop. Some of the cheeses, well, uh, like I said, they come from all over the world, as well as domestic. So um, some of our favorite domestic ones would be uh, probably our Jasper Hill cloth-bound cheddar uh, from Vermont. We have uh, several cowgirl creamery cheeses here from California. And then, you know, we have things from Spain, um, traditional cheeses from France, Italy, um, just, just all over. We even have a, a wonderful blue Cambazola cheese from Germany that people love. <laughs> I didn't realize with cheeses, having so many of them, it's almost like that of wine, where half of the, the fun is kind of understanding the origin of the cheese, understanding where it comes from. Is that a process of the edu part of the education process you enjoy sharing with folks? It certainly is. It's one reason I wanted to open this place is to be able to share that, share that passion and, you know, have people have a, a fun experience of trying something new and, and learning something about it. As you said, you're basically importing this cheese here from all over the world. Um, so does the inventory kind of change based on the seasons and that type of thing? Yes, it does. And also on availability. Uh, that has to do with the season as well as uh, just demand for certain cheeses. But yes, they do change. Um, we're talking about handcrafted cheeses here. Um, we're talking about small scale methods where these artisans really can control the quality as well as their craft. Yes, that's correct. And uh, they are in it for love. Uh, it's a labor of love for them. Um, it's not a, you know, they're not into the big industrial processing type of cheeses making a lot of money. Most of them don't make a lot of money. They do this because they, they love what they do. Kind of like yourself, basically, it was a it was an enjoyment, a love of food. Um, you really you took your time getting educated all the way from New York, now here to Colorado. Um, now that you learned all about this, is it enjoyable sharing with some of your knowledge with with folks that are able to sit here? It is. It really is. And actually, it's fun to learn from them too. So so many people have traveled all around the world and tried different things, and it's fun fun to hear you know for me to learn from them as well. As the name might imply cheese is all you do but that's obviously not the case i mean we're talking about cured meats share with me a little bit why that was important to add to the menu well um you know cheese and meat go well together and also there's um, a lot of producers um say in italy um, that take the whey from the cheese that they make the byproduct and they feed that to the pigs which in turn make amazing meat, and it's good for them, and it uh, makes you know makes everything more sustainable. 
Excellent. I also see you've got hot sandwiches, cold sandwiches. What a great way to actually showcase some of this meat. Um, so you can actually come in on, um, enjoy it right here, but you can also take it with you as well. Yes, that's correct. And uh, so we, yeah, we encourage folks to, to come in. They can get anything they want to go. Uh, all of our cheese and meats are cut to order, so they can take that out or they can stay, have it on a sandwich or a cheese tray uh, along with a glass of wine or Colorado craft beer. I could basically see this is the kind of place where a snack can quickly become a meal. I mean, I see salads, I see breeze, I see chips, dips, nut bowls. You guys pretty much have it covered when it comes to some finger food that is really delicious. Yes, and we tried to you know, source the most quality ingredients that we could and come up with things that uh, would suit every, everyone's tastes. Obviously, this pairing paradise wouldn't be complete without wine. Um, share with me, are you able to offer this by the glass and also, also by the bottle? Yeah, we offer over 25 wines by the glass and over 70 by the bottle. So much more selection by the bottle, but boy, we're talking over two dozen just by the glass themselves. Um, what are some of the wines that you have on stock for folks here? Um, I imagine you can take care of anybody, red wines, white wines, dessert wines. Yes, we have it all. Um, Rosés, whites, sparkling, um, like as you mentioned, dessert wines, and uh, we've tried to I've tried to source things from different locations, different kinds of wines, so that we'll have a lot of different variety for people to choose from. I imagine your um, executive wine certification has come in handy now that you're actually picking out some of these wines for folks to try. Um, is it made it enjoyable for you? And like you said, it's an ongoing education when you get in this type of industry. It is. it is. And really, the education is by experience, a lot of it. Um, tastes are so subjective, and that's the whole fun of it, is uh, getting to learn just by tasting and, and comparing notes with others. <laughs> Obviously, we can talk all day about great product, great food, but this was a place about connecting with people. Share with me a little bit about the experience of when people walk in. Well, uh, what we encourage folks to do is actually come to the case and taste our cheese. Um, everything's available for tasting, and I think that's what makes us unique, is the fact that if someone orders a, a meat and cheese tray, they come to the case, we'll taste them through, and let them select what they want on their tray. And many folks enjoy bringing their glass of wine or beer up to the case and doing pairings right then while they're, while they're tasting. That is great. So instead of your typical pre-selected, here's what we've got for the day, you're really tasting taking part in the actual selection for yourself and uh, finding out what goes great with your palate. Yes, that's right. <laughs> you have a fun industry to be in. Viewers, take a look at the bottom of the screen right there. What you're going to see is their website. First of all, on the website, take a look at uh, basically a place that was inspired by a grandfather. You can take a look at the tab there where it will explain the whole story of how this came to be. And you can also take a, a great look at the menu. Um, keep in mind, this is a menu that can kind of change. It's a rotating menu because of the fact that what's in supply, what seasons there are. We're talking about uh, being imported from all across the world. You can also keep in touch with them there on Facebook as well. Um, check out the media tab. They've only been around here in the Denver neighborhood for a short period of time. They've already been, already been written up. Um, we were glad to come down here and be able to introduce them on television as well. Um, this has to be a great place also to put together a, a, a nice party platter or even possibly a gift basket where somebody can try a little bit of each. Is that something you provide? Yes, we have both party platters and gift baskets. What about somebody who actually wants to come in and have a, a, maybe a small party of some type? Are you doing any type of catering right here on the premises? We do. Uh, we host private events on Sundays and Mondays when we're regularly closed. Uh, but also for smaller parties, we have uh, sectioned off uh, part of the, the restaurant and, and hosted parties for folks. It's been a lot of fun. <laughs> Wonderful. I mean, I love the decor, what you did here. It looks very Colorado, very rustic. Um, and like you said, we've got wine, you got cheese, you got meats. But it wouldn't be complete here in Colorado if you didn't have craft beer. Was that something important that you put behind the bar there? Yes. And I made sure it is, was all from Colorado. Everything from Colorado. Wonderful. Obviously, this was inspired by a man that was a great influence on you. He started out with his own private garden. What do you think he would say if he were to walk through this door and take a look at this place? What do you think he'd say? I think he'd say he was proud. I bet so. Viewers, last time, take a look at the bottom of the uh, screen right there. You're going to see their website. Um, once again, we're talking about a place where you can come on in 
um, be it a weekday or weekend. Um, once again, remember we're talking about a hundred different cheeses they've got right here lined up. You can decide if you're not sure what's in the cheese or where it may come from. Um, they've got a knowledgeable staff that will share that with you. And uh, keep in mind, this was something that was basically created out of a passion uh, for wanting to share some great food. Um, this isn't a pretentious wine bar. This is really a come as you are, or as her grandfather would say, be as you are. This is Gary Atencio with CNTV, and if you don't know, now you know. <laughs>